I really hope there's life or traces of previous life on Mars. This is a special spot in my heart because I got to work on Sherlock, which is the astrobiology experiment that's on Mars right now, searching for what they would say in a very cautious way is signs of past habitability. They want to be careful not to get people overly excited and say we're searching for signs of life. They're searching to see if there would have been organics on the surface of Mars or water in certain areas that would have allowed for life to flourish. And I really love this prospect. I do think within our lifetimes, we'll get a better answer about finding life in our solar system if it's there. If not on Mars, maybe Europa, one of the icy worlds. So you like the... You like uh, astrobiology. I do. So this is part part of the, so it's not just about human biology. It's also other extraterrestrial alien biology. Search for life in the universe. Okay. Yeah. Does that scare you or excite you? It excites me, profoundly excites me. That there's me. other alien civilizations, potentially very different than our, our own? I think there's got to be some humility there. And certainly from science fiction, we have plenty of reasons to fear that outcome as well. But I do think as a scientist, it would be profoundly exciting if we were to find life, especially in the near neighborhood of our solar system. Right now, we would expect it to be most likely microbial life. But we have a real serious challenge in astrobiology, which is it may not even be carbon-based life. Right. And all of our detectors, we only know to look for DNA or RNA. How would you even build a detector to look for silicon-based life or different molecules than what we know to be the fundamental molecules for life. And then you mentioned offline Sarah Walker. I mean, she, yes. her, the, the question that she's obsessed with is even just defining life. Mm -hmm. What is life to look outside uh, the carbon base? I mean, to look outside of basically anything we can even imagine chemically, uh, to look outside of any kind of notions that we think of as biology. Yeah, it's it's really weird. So you you now get into this land of like complexity of mm -hmm. a measuring of like how many assembly steps it takes to build that thing. Right. And right. maybe maybe uh dynamic movement or some maintenance of some kind of membrane structures like the, we don't even know like which properties life should have right. uh whether it can should be able to reproduce and all those kinds of things or pass information gen genetic type of information we don't know and it's like it's that's so humbling i mean i tend to believe that there could be something like alien life here on earth and we're just too human biology obsessed to even recognize it. The shadow biosphere, I remember you and Sarah were talking about. <laughs> I mean, that, that's like, speaking of beer, I mean, that's something I wanted to make sure in all of science to shake ourselves out of like, remind ourselves constantly how little we know. Because mm -hmm. it might be right in front of our nose. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if like trees are like orders of magnitude more intelligent than humans. They're just operating at a much slower scale. And they're like, talking shit about us the whole time, <laughs> like about silly humans that take everything seriously and we start all kinds of nuclear wars and we quarrel and we tweet about it. And then, yeah. but the trees are always there just watching us silly humans. As, like, like the ants in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> exactly. <laughs>